Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is the History of the Data Center and we're going to move on to Section 4 or Part 4 of Evolution of the Data Center, the 1990s to the present day. So one of the first computer systems I worked on earlier in my career was something called Novell Network. And what Novell Network did was take um, servers that we talked about before and personal computers and networks and join them all together so that a central server running the Novell Network operating system can be used to connect and share files and folders and printers between everybody in the organization. So just for clarity here we have um, a Novell Network server in the middle which can share files and folders and printers with everybody else on the network usually employees with their own personal computer on their own desk so this is how we started to um, collaborate and share information and at the time printers were so expensive that generally an organization would only have one per company or one per department so again it was a cost effective way of giving everybody access to a printer without everybody needing their own printer so this worked well for a number of years um, and for any business wanting to share files, folders and prints with multiple employees, this was the de facto standard for running a computer network. And then slightly later came something called Windows NT, possibly one of the worst names for an operating system as the NT stood for new technology. Um, in the world of IT, nothing is ever new for very long, so as pretty much as soon as it was released, it was no longer new technology because something else had come along. But um, that's where the name came from originally. So Windows NT was Microsoft's version of a server. So similar to what a Novell Network server did. But as you can see, it's got a more graphical user interface or GUI, graphical user interface. Looks a little bit more like Windows 95 or the modern day Windows. And it does essentially the same job as a Novell Network server with files, folders and printers. But now we can run something called client server applications and that just means that it's an application that the business can use where part of the program relies on the client or the the employee's computer and part of the application is sat on the server so the um, the um, organization uh, or the central computer part of it so an example of this might be the a user's email system the messages are stored centrally on a central server but the user looks at the message using their own personal computer and a program like Outlook so that's an example of a client server application there are lots of other client server applications we can do things like databases customer relationship management enterprise resource planning HR payroll and we've also got other things like Windows network services such as databases email internet and intranet but basically Windows NT took the model that Novell Network had and made it friendlier for the user and added more types of thing that you could do. But essentially we're still doing the same thing. We are computerizing all aspects of running a business and allowing individual employees with personal computers to collaborate and work together with the same set of information. So the next thing we've got, just as just as we're, organizations are starting to computerize, is the dot-com era. So from the late 1990s to present day, um, people started to talk about the internet uh, and dot-com. Uh, and we started with things like dial-up networking, uh, with search engines and early versions of web browsers. Um, and things like dial-up net networking and dial-up internet connections give us things like Mosaic and Netscape Navigator as web browsers, Alta Vista, Yahoo and Google search engines. We now have websites and personal home pages. And we start to hear start to hear terms like World Wide Web, WWW, and HTML or hypertext markup language. So again, this is where um, people started to connect and started to get online. So we started with computers that were just standalone computers. We then connected them to computer networks, and then we connected to an, an, an internetwork of computer networks or the internet. And now um, it seems common that every computer at some stage is going to be connected or work permanently from um, a, a company network or a home network as well as the internet and typical use for the internet at the time was basically anybody who had a dial-up modem so one of the things that happened with the dot-com era uh, and the dot-com boom and bust was that servers have now started to become so cheap and easy to procure that 
every department wants one to itself but now every single application wants a whole server to itself plus a few extra servers and spurs for backups and disaster recovery so we're very quickly getting to the point now where servers and server hardware is so cheap to procure that people are buying them as fast as the companies can build them and the single server that was once under a desk or in the cleanest cupboard or next to the photocopier has now become in some businesses tens or hundreds of servers that now occupy hold air conditioned rooms or sometimes even whole buildings and the amount of power that's required to to run these servers and cooling to keep them down is now starting to become a real problem the um, servers are now so cheap and we're buying them so fast that our problem is quickly becoming how do we power these and cool these so this is known as server sprawl and uh, we're at the point now where we've hit a brick wall and where something has to be done about the number of servers that companies and businesses are buying because we just have nowhere to store them, power them or cool them. So in a typical company you might find that we've added a directory service, something that, that stores usernames and passwords and allows people to log on in the morning. We've got network services like DHCP, DNS and WINS, so these are services that get you onto a network, help you find sites on the internet or find other computers on your network. We've now got maybe a couple of email servers for running people's mailboxes. We might have an SQL server or a database server, the SQL being structured query language, it's just the way that we talk to a database we might have a fax server which was becoming common in the day that more and more people needed to fax so uh, in clever ways were found to send faxes from computers without having to to print something out and physically walk to the machine we've got things like internet proxies uh, a secure way or a more secure way of connecting multiple users to the internet through a an early form of firewall we might have something like a company ordering system that everybody uses together and we might want more than one copy of that uh, we might have our own little intranet site where company information is shared with internal users. We might have a help desk and we might have a HR system but we are getting to the point where the number of servers is becoming a problem. Um, maybe even things like timesheets but you can see that we are soon getting to the point where the number of servers is increasing rapidly and something needs to be done about them. So it was around this time that the answer to server sprawl um, appeared to be something called virtualization that we still wanted all of these applications and services but we didn't necessarily want all the equipment and all the power and cooling that was required to run them so one of the things that VMware did in the early 1990s and you'll see an early VMware logo there was to take physical hardware and abstract it into pools of virtual hardware so by that I mean they take all of the CPUs present in the physical hardware and turn that into virtual CPUs they take all of the physical memory and turn it into virtual memory and we take all the data stores and storage and turn it into virtual storage and we take all the networks and virtual networks and turn them into a virtual networking or VNIX so just to show you a picture of that, what we're basically saying is let's take all the hardware across multiple different servers. We install a clever piece of software on top called the hypervisor and the hypervisor is given complete access to all of the physical hardware underneath and in return it gives us an amount of virtual hardware that we can pool together and ag aggregate across all those servers and what we can do then is start running not physical computer machines we start running virtual machines or VMs and the hypervisor is clever enough to let us run lots and lots of virtual machines or lots of copies of operating systems and applications on far fewer pieces of physical hardware so what we're doing here is we're, we're pooling the physical hardware together we're using a hypervisor to pool and abstract that hardware into virtual hardware and the reason we do that is because we can run more applications and services on virtual hardware than we could do on traditional servers so it's a way of running multiple operating systems and multiple applications on a fewer number of physical boxes or physical servers because th the management of those boxes the power the cooling and the air conditioning and all those other things that go with them has become a problem so we now need to change the way that we do stuff so that's why virtualization started to become the thing in the 1990s to the present day because we're just running out of space and power and cooling 
So virtualization basics is the topic for our next section.